Well, that was an interesting experience. I've got the electronics together. What I needed to do is the servos that I had had uh, the, the wrong size connectors on the end of the wires. So it, they actually had a, a JSTSH connector, but it was a 1.25 pitch um, plug, and this needed a 1.0 pitch plug in order to go in. You know, I could have ordered another servo um, with the correct pitch, but these things, I mean, 1.7 grams, they're actually pretty nice, exactly what I need. Um, so uh, I got these cables here that have the 1.0 pitch uh, um, pins on the end, and pretty much I've just joined them together. I mean, it looks a bit rough, but it works. I've tested it. So what we have now is we have our completed uh, set of electronics for this um, Fokker E uh, micro machine. The motor, the 3700 kV motor that came as a package with the kit. I'll toss the ESC. It would have cost uh, five grams in weight. Uh, whereas what I have here is the RX144E uh, receiver which is a DSMX receiver with a built-in ES, brushless ESC. And I ran the wire from there through to the motor, it works, and I can basically get rid of uh, 15 gra or 5 grams worth of weight, which seems pretty precious. So altogether, I, I did measure the away this. Um, now I'm looking at it, how it looks like this. I'm thinking to maybe weigh it again, just for fun. Um, there will be some extra weight required for the carbon fiber rods that connect the servos to the back. Um, but, uh, you know, more or less, we're going to be sitting at around 50 grams uh, all up as the weight for the plane. The rated weight is 32 to 35 grams. I think that's right. Let me just check. The rated weight is 30 to 35 grams. And right now, without the electronics, it sits at 33. And it's basically out of the box, except for a little bit of paint on this cowling here and a couple of vinyl um, decals that I made. I can't imagine that they're more than they're a fraction of a gram. So there's, you know, definitely it's going to be overweight according to the spec, but I can't see how it would come out any other way, honestly. That is that is what it is. But that aside, what we're going to do now is put everything in together. So what we have here, the interesting part is that the motor needs to go onto the front of the engine here, and or the front of the, the machine here under the cowling. Uh, it bolts onto this little block, engine block here. Interestingly, different to the Sopwith pump, this is completely flat and square. There is no right thrust or down thrust built into the mounting. I'm kind of nervous about that. I, I'm, I'm, you know, the, actually the, the Sopwith Pup, which is almost identical in size, in fact it's slightly smaller, has a very dramatic right thrust and, and down thrust built into the frame, the, the case, the um, mounting block that you actually build as part of the kit. And this one just has it, brushless motor, screws on the front, points straight ahead. I mean, I guess we'll see, but I'm kind of surprised. So uh, maybe I'll post a question about that. It might be interesting to see what they have to say. And that'll be the Dancing Wings hobby people because they, they actually turn it, are quite responsive if I post questions on Facebook, what I found. So so this is, uh, this is what we need to do. I mean, it all will go in the underside and, and what I'm gonna have to do is first put the motor on and then feed the wire for the motor through to the underside, through the, the fuselage, the front of the fuselage there. And then the receiver is gonna mount pretty much directly under the cockpit here. The two servos have very nicely positioned little um, mounting bays for the servos that are just above the, I guess above the trailing edge of the wing pretty much. They're about here. And they will, they need to be wired up to the to the, these control rods, the 
these carbon fiber rods that are going to come through from the elevator and the rudder at the back. Now that's going to be very fiddly and awkward um, because I've got a tiny little hole in the bottom of the plane to get to, to work with those and with these little wire attachments that go um, that actually connect to the control horns at the at the control surfaces the tail feathers end and the control horns that are going to go onto the onto the um, the servos it's it's going to be quite awkward and I, I'm, I have to plan it ahead now there's there's two pictures on the plan at number seven here these oh, sorry number number six that explain everything you need to know about doing this so yeah not a lot of detail and it's very fine I got my mic magnifying glass out to have a look and what I think I figured out is that I'm gonna to have to do it in careful steps in order to get this all to come together correctly so this is my this is my plan and we'll see how it how the plan comes out in reality the plan will be first take the servo uh, well I'll unplug that from the um, from the receiver before I try to put it in I'll take the servo and I'll attach the the clip the little clip in here I will run the control horn through from the back of the plane and then I'm gonna feed the wire from this the servo in underneath so that it and feed it forwards this wire is actually going to be end up being ballast because it's going to feed forward and kind of hop, sit in the front of the of the fuselage here and that will basically feed that forward and then feed it back up over so that it can uh, can attach to the servo because if you look at the way that the the structure is inside the plane the the wire coming out of the bottom of the servo here is actually underneath a shelf where the receiver is on the top so the wire is going to have to get up over the top somehow my, my theory is that I feed it under the back and bring it up over the top from the front so that I get all of this extra wire weight in the front of the plane um, sort of out of the way there I mean I, I probably could do it but I feel more comfortable having the extra weight uh, the extra length of the cables and being having that flexibility to sort of move things around than being stuck with something too short and then and then not being able to fit everything together and get it to plug in so um, it's a call um, it's uh, it's why I did you know join them so long because I'm really worried about the space that I'm gonna have to play around in there and getting a servo connected in and then finding out that I can't connect the wire into where I need it to be. This guarantees it's going to be possible because it really does. It has to feed all the way underneath and back around and up the top somehow and I don't want to run out of uh, string to get there. So that's the plan. Fit the wire here, feed the control horn through, push the servo in and feed the wire around then seat the servo into its slot and final step is attach the control horn the wire on the control horn here with the heat shrink cable the heat shrink um, uh, tubing attach the wire together to the that end of the control rod and then once I've got that in place the last step will be to join it at the tail end uh, because only then will I actually know what the correct length will be. If I attached the control rod at the tail end first, then it's almost going to be impossible to judge exactly what the right distance should be for the for the control horn and cut it off. Well, in fact, I mean, I'm not even sure how I'd get the tool that I would need inside the plane to cut it at that point it'd be really awkward and um, you know run the risk of damaging something so I'm gonna be attaching everything at the front first very carefully step by step like threading a needle I'm sure I'll be using at least one pair of tweezers probably two as as this is all fed through 
and then finally attaching uh, the ends, the other ends of the control rods to the control surfaces of the rudder and the elevator. So that's my plan. Uh, I'm gonna, um, I'm not sure if I'll film all of that. It's gonna be really fiddly and awkward work and just take a lot of time. I'm not sure the value of having a video that shows it all. Um, I'll take, do some checkpoints on the way through um, and, and stick them together into a video that, that kind of shows the, the steps. Uh, I will also, if I uh, make a mess, uh, mess something up or have a problem on the way, um, try to show you what uh, I've encountered so that uh, it maybe will help you building yours. So let's uh, come along for the ride and let's see how putting the electronics into the Fokker E Micro from Dancing Wings Hobby comes together. I just wanted to point out one other thing before I got started, and, and that's about how I've connected the motor to the to the receiver. So the the receiver came with a plug that connected into the three uh, sockets um, in the in the board for connecting in a uh, an ESC or a motor. Sorry, a motor actually because. It doesn't have an ESC, and it really it just came with it came with the plug plus the th the wires. So these three wires here, not actually um, connected to anything. That was just empty. Those those wires were loose. So what I did, and and what I could have done, is taken the motor that that came with it and simply either put put these three plugs straight into the end of here and soldered it on. Um, or soldered them together. Now I could have soldered them together then I might have had a problem if um, if I got it like in the wrong direction if it got counterclockwise versus clockwise. So by using the connector that came with the the motor and soldering them onto the end of the wires here what I get is the easy ability that if I need to change direction I can just simply unplug here and switch that over and plug it back in and uh, it would um, reverse the direction of the motor. Turns out I don't need to do that, but unless I did that, if I got it wrong at this end, then I would have no other way to reverse it except for un unsoldering the solders and resoldering again. So this gives me an easy way, easy pluggable way to do that. The second thing that this does give me, which again is just a sort of a factor of this plane and how it needs to be is that those wires for that motor are actually not quite long enough to get from if the motor is mounted there the wire for the motor will come through and it will finish about here and that would be not far enough to get it to the receiver which is actually going to end up being over here to be short by I don't know a centimeter a very frustrating amount uh, of distance it would be short by and even worse, again, because of the fact that I've built this, like I'm inserting the electronics last rather than building it on the way through, um, it's really, again, going to be fiddly to feed that through and get it through to the receiver. Now, if I had uh, built the uh, electronics in as I built the plane, which is not following the instructions, the instructions say add the electronics at the end as well, so it's not like I, I didn't follow the instructions. Um, but if I didn't follow the instructions and built the electronics in at the front, this would be so easy. And um, again, my excuse is that I didn't have the receiver when I built the rest of the plane. Uh, I really wanted to see it all come together and I wasn't that patient. I could have just waited, but I didn't. So now it's a question of, well, follow the instructions and put the electronics in at the end. And this is one of the things that will help with that, which is a nice long connection between the motor and the the receiver plug um, that will enable me to feed that through the plane and then to where the receiver is going to sit just under the front of the cockpit there. So now I really am going to start.